Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. We're back on the 20 horse Mercury. I believe this is a 1970. I'm going to mess this up. Five? Seven? It's in the title. You clicked on it. Look at the title. Um, we've checked this out. We've got a good spark. We've got good compression. We got no carburation. If you remember right, this one here, I picked it up on the cheap because the guy said it just kicked and died, kicked and died, kicked and died. So the kick in part meant it had spark, which I verified it has great spark, both top and bottom cylinders. Has great compression, both top and bottom cylinders. The only thing that's wrong, you gotta have three things. Everybody knows it. What is it? You? Yes, compression. What's the second thing? That's right, you in the back. Orange shirt, stand up. Spark. There you go, very good. Third thing, middle, middle front, right here. That's right, fuel. You gotta have fuel. Compression, spark, fuel, bang, it runs. Anyway, we're gonna go in and uh, we've got compression, we got spark, we're gonna show you how I'm going to show you what the steps I take. Uh, some of the, it's no secret, but let's just call it some cheats. Do we cheat a little bit on doing carburetor? Uh, I, I, I'm not sponsored by MarineEngine.com or OldMercs.com, but I do buy parts from them fairly regularly. So I, I, if you go to off camera, back on camera, if you go to marineengine.com, they've got schematics for just about everything. They've got, I've actually printed off here and I'll show you up close here in a minute. Uh, exploded view of the carburetor shows all the parts and pieces, especially when you have a, a fuel pump built on the carburetor like this one is, shows the stack up of the gaskets. Let's go over here and look at the carburetor right now. Let's not waste any more time. Now, if you do like I do, I got a snipping tool on my computer where you can snip a little picture off the screen. So you can bring this up on your computer screen. Then you can transfer this into Word. Then you can print it off. You can take it out in the shop. You can scribble on it. I made a couple little notes on it here. And, and I'll be honest with you, folks. I made notes because I want to make sure I'm calling some of this stuff the right stuff. And then some of this stuff like here, I got a question mark here. It doesn't even, you know, it doesn't tell you what that is. But, but number 43 doesn't even exist in the parts list. I mean, they don't have it available so, you know, when you start dealing with some of these older things, they're just things that aren't available anymore. But you can see how nicely it shows the stack up right here of all the fuel pump stuff and the fuel screen and the fuel inlet, how it all stacks up together. So that's how you guys think I'm really good at working on these things. Well, this stuff helps, okay? You too, you too can be an expert. <laughs> I'll set this aside now. Now, if you might have saw in the previous video when I took this carburetor apart, you know, we got some old dried up, I mean, these are some dried up cork gaskets. We have a float that's just cracked and deteriorated from just years of being in a piece of plastic in existence, soaked in gasoline. We've got several pieces here for the pump. Uh, the good news is the screen just looks a little wrinkly, but uh, looks usable. Some of these carburetor pieces have some corrosion on it. You can see some of the nasty dirt here. That's why it wouldn't pump, I'm guessing. We've got the carburetor body right here that has, you look down through here, there's corrosion down in here. It's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's very salvageable. Got a float bowl gasket that's broken. Blech. I bought a new kit. This is a Quicksilver kit. I'm hoping this is the right one. Not returnable if opened, but how can I tell? Lord have mercy if it's the right one, but I hope it is. I hope it is. It better be. Because this was not cheap. This was like between this and the new float. Am I getting you guys in the shot here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So this is the float number. 1395-9293 and one three nine nine. Dash five one nine nine. The link will not be below in the description because I just put it in front of your face. Write it down. 
pause, write it, okay? Not being mean, just being reasonable. Well, I, I started thinking about how would I clean up these parts? How would I show people how I clean up these parts? And uh, let's do that now. Now we haven't fully disassembled everything yet. Uh, we've got, there again, we got a plug up here. Is that part in here? It looks like a new piece here. There's a plug here. There's, looks like you might be able to take this jet out here. You got another jet here that you want to make sure is clear and wide open. But I just find it nice to take all that out so you can look at it, flush things out really well. Now when you're taking stuff apart like this, always use a high quality screwdriver, a good screwdriver that has a good tip on it. So you don't sit there and round out and make sure it fits in there. See that one fits pretty decent. Not all the way in there. Let's go to the next size down here. There we go. And you won't round things out and destroy it and make it look like amateur hour was here, you know? So there's one there. We'll set that right there. There's another one down here. This one's too wide to get down in there. That one's just the right size. Oh. I didn't know if that was going to back out or not. You know, you get some of that corrosion going on. But it is just nice to take everything out you can. Just so you don't, you know, even if you flush it out, there could be trash trapped on the other side. I can see some stuff coming out there. This actually looks pretty nice and clean. Cross holes here. I can see it. You're looking for a nice round hole through there. If it's not round... That means there's trash in there. So we got those two out. What else we got here? Let's take, um, this look like it on the, on the, the diagram looks like it has a long needle on the end of it. See, somebody didn't use a really good screwdriver on here at one time in history. And they've kind of boogered it up a little bit here. Let's see if I can get it without stabbing a hole in my hand. Oh, see it popped out. I have to use my strong hand. Oh, that ain't coming out. That ain't coming out none. And see, that one comes right through here, right down into here. And it would really, I would really love to get that out of there without destroying it. Well, that ain't coming out at all. I'm going to have to presume that it's going to be, if it doesn't work right, I'll blame it all on that. Every bit of it, you know that. Cool part is I do have another whole carburetor here off the other one, Mercury that I parted out of the same, pretty much the same year, same make model. It's identical. Uh, you know, it could be one of those situations. Do I just pull this one apart and rebuild this one because they are absolutely identical in every way? What do you guys think? I don't know. Part of me wants to pull this one apart. Because it looks, other than the dent, major dent in the carburetor bowl, and this carburetor bowl is like spotless. Something just makes me want to take it apart. This has the fuel line on it already with the fuel connect. The whole nine yards. The fuel connect on this one is still on the, still on the outboard itself. Boy, I really want to, I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do, we'll, we'll decide here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how I clean this up. I do have a couple of brushes I bought. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight. You know, not expensive. A lot of the stores have them. I even Home Depot had them. But you can get the stainless brush and you can sit here and work. Work a brush around real easy. Clean all that corrosion off of there. Um, also got a brass brush, a softer bristle brass brush. Blah, blah, blah. Say that real fast. Softer bristle brass brush. Softer bristle brass brush. Blah, 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 blah. And you can, you can get a lot of that corrosion out of there mechanically like this. You can go after it. 
Takes a little effort. A little elbow grease. See a little gasket still stuck on there. And what you want to be careful of, I'm going to see if I can get you in close here. What I want to get you in close here to see is you see these little raised lines around here? They go around things, the little tiny ribs, it looks like. They're not, they're not really, you know, super prominent, but you don't want to remove those. You want to protect those. And you ask me, Michael, why would you want to protect those? Well, just scrape that thing down smooth. Well, I'm going to tell you why, because that helps the, this bite into the gasket and create an even better seal. It helps really chamber off these, you know, these are separate chambers, how this fuel pump works. And it really wants to make sure there's no air passing through so you don't end up with bubbles. So you want to be careful. See, I've got, see this side is smooth on this one. So and this has three holes. I'm, I'm presuming, boom, that goes like that. It's been a minute since I had this part, so I got to look at the schematic, but I'm almost positive. That's how that goes. And then, what do you know, this four, four, four bolt pattern lines up on here. There it is. Only difference is you got to stack the right gaskets in between to make it work. Simple? Yes. Now, I'm going to show you another thing. I've been wanting a cordless Dremel, but I don't want to pay a crazy amount of money for it because I don't use Dremels that often. But I bought this Chicago Electric one from Harbor Freight. And it's multiple speed, 9 volt, 9.6 volt, nothing fancy or special at all. But the cool part, you can buy these little tiny wire brushes. Let's just get in here. This is this is a little wire brush made by Dremel. All right, let's do that in the garbage. That's a that was a three point shot. I ain't kidding you none. Let's just go ahead and stick this here, and I'm gonna show you how. Got a little lock here, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Do I need it? Don't I need it? There we go. But now I can go in here. Let's see how this works. Is it gonna work? have enough horsepower the nice thing is it's not crazy powerful but it does make it nice getting in here gently clean it up and you won't wreck any of that detail you need to hold on to it's a little bit of corrosion here I took off with the other little handheld one I can just get in here and just Just make it gone. You could soak this in carburetor cleaner. It'd probably do the same thing. Once you're done wire wheeling it all off and cleaning it, you just, I like to hose it down with some uh, carb cleaner, just to flush it. And once it's flushed, uh, blow it dry with some air. That cleans up pretty easy. Now I can't quite get all the way down in there also here on the carb, let's just see what this does down here. I got some got some crud down here in the carb. I want to get rid of all that. I don't want any of that floating around getting in plug. All you gotta do is plug a jet up just a little bit and it ain't gonna run like you want it to. Your needles won't work. There's a whole bunch of things that just stop working. Now I'll get down in here and, this, and get a little scraper in here and get that last little bit down in the corner that the brush won't reach. Let's keep moving forward on this. Don't be afraid to pick you up a set of picks from Harbor Freight or anywhere else that sell little pick tools because they're nice for getting down in here, wiggling around, scraping some stuff. Down here where a lot of the corrosion I can't get to is located is right where the float needle seat goes you want to make sure that's all cleaned up. I can see a lot of crud down in there. Don't be afraid to take an old screwdriver and sand on it a little bit. And uh, make yourself a little scraper tool out of an old screwdriver. Repurpose it. You can pick, you know, screwdrivers, cheap old screwdrivers up for, you know, a quarter for a hundred of them at the garage sale or something. And repurpose, make, make some little tools. Make a pick tool out of it. Sharpen one to a point. Who cares? 
Create some of your own tools. Put your belt sander to use. All right. I've got what I can see is most all the cruddy cruds off of these pieces. And uh, we'll go from there. Now a little tech tip for you. You can take, I have, I've got a little glass jar I keep out in the shop here. You can take a can of brake clean, fill it up to here, and you can soak your carburetor parts in it to get them nice and clean. And you, this was, it comes out, that's as clear as water when you poured it in there, but after you get your carb cleaned, it uh, looks a little bit like that. But we got all our parts nice and spick and span, looking really good. I think we're ready to go back together. And let's just step by step show you what I'm doing to put this thing back together piece by piece. And I've got it as part as far as I can get it, even so much so that this little guy here, I'll show you where it goes because it blew out. And it's so funny because on the diagram, the schematic, it shows this part doesn't even exist. We'll dive in. Okay, I'm going to show you with as much 4K clarity as I can here. I'm zoomed in. This little black piece was inside the carburetor. I'll show you where it goes in just a second. I was blowing this all out. I had this piece taken out. This guy right here. That comes in through the bottom right here. And that comes in right through the bottom. Right there. And then when it screws in, it'll stick up into here just a bit. From the inside. This guy right here, you got to make sure you get in the right direction. You can put it in this way or this way. There's a right way and a wrong way because this has, let's see if I can point it out to you here. This has more of a radius fillet on this side. And this side has a longer chamfer that you, you can look through it this, if you look straight down into it this direction, you can see that it's tapered. So you want to put the radius side this is, this is where the air goes in. This, this down here is mounted. This is the flange that mounts to the engine block. And you want to make sure this radius is facing toward this up. I'm trying to make this as clear as possible. So, and then once it goes in here, this guy goes in and sits like that and locks it into place. So you got to make sure you got to make, you can put it in the wrong way. And uh, I'm not sure it'll function because the way that's tapered and where the radius is, you know, it's creating like a venturi effect and helps pull that fuel up through the jet here. So now we're going to put that in and I'll start threading it in. Let me see if I can get you in here a little closer. That's going to be tough. There just ain't a whole lot of good light to get you on in here. I'll see if I can get my flashlight. But I'm screwing that in and carefully watching to make sure it goes up through that black piece. Without binding or bending or breaking that black piece of plastic. Because it's, it's old. Alright. Let's see if I can get a ridiculous amount of light in here. And show you what that looks like. Sorry if it looks a little funky because of the LED light. But you can see how that's sitting in there now with that little brass piece coming up through it. Also, notice how clean everything is. Now, I had to take the butterfly off, unfortunately. Because I dropped that and it came out and I couldn't get it back in there without it. Okay, I've got my butterfly back in now. I had to take that out to get that piece in, but that's back in. Springs got the load on it. It's where your cable hooks in for your choke right there. Moves very freely. We're in good shape there. I want to go ahead and put the bowl on next. I just feel like that's a good, good place to go to. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my package here with the float. Got a couple things going on here. It's going to... Looks like there's instructions in here, which I'm pretty tickled about. I like instructions. Don't take away my man card. But sometimes it's just nice to have. Here they're showing the float settings being between 
0.280 and 0.380 measuring from the carburetor to the top edge of the float well that should be easy enough to achieve look at that fits old and busted new hotness now this one had a float needle in it it looks like this it's just a little needle with a taper on the end it's got your tip that goes down a little rubbery tip here and this one's got a tapered end on it so that's what we're going to put back in i noticed in the kit this kit came with two needles so i'm gonna we're gonna open that up right here You guys saw how I opened that? I just used my knife to cut the edge open. Do it that way. Because if you try ripping it open and you lose a piece, good luck. There are a lot of pieces in here. I'm going to keep them separate from the new, the old pieces. Well, it looks like there's new little tiny screws. Wow. Huh. The enclosed needle will not fit the following carburetors. Oh. And look at here, right there. Just curious, I saw numbers earlier. That's a B A 2C 2. B A 2C. That's a 2C. B A 2C. This is B A 2A. So that means it'll fit. This carburetor isn't among the list. I wonder if the other one is that one of those numbers, eh? Man, there's some little tiny plugs. If you really take it apart that far, good luck, buddy. So these look like fuel pump type. There's some membranes there. Woo. Another thin membrane thingy here. That's pretty rubbery feeling, please. Got a screen with a hole in it. Your base gasket. Another corker here, which I'm guessing goes right in our other. Okay, we we'll get this. We're gonna get this, guys. Lots of lots of little tiny parts. I'll try not to knock any of these on the floor while we're doing this. Getting getting intense. So let's flip this over. We're gonna close this bad boy up. See, here's the other type of needle seat that came with it. It's a whole different thing with a spring on the end here. And we'll just set that aside. We're not going to be using that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this one in. Just like that. We'll drop the float in. I don't see why I can't. We're going to go ahead and throw a pin. Oh yeah, that just bottoms right out and doesn't, that's hitting against the metal. So I'm guessing there is some tweaking you have to do to this guy to get it, get it in the right measure. I'm going to pull this back out a little bit. And in here, there's a little metal thing in my bobber here. I'm going to take my little punch and we're just going to bend it. We're going to bend it down a little bit. When you bend it down, it's going to hit that needle and hold this up. So we're going to have to make a couple of adjustments with this this way. We'll stick the pin back in. And what you're looking for here, from the from the top edge of the carburetor to the top of the float, 
280 to 320. I got a 280 to 320 measuring tool. Now I went and set my caliper here at 280. 280, that means this, this hair is sticking out from the bottom here, out 280. I can put this right here and see that I'm quite a ways away from it. Means I've got to bend that tab quite a bit to get that to sit where it needs to sit. If you don't have it, have it where it puts enough pressure on the needle seat, it won't hold it shut. I just bent that quite a bit. I may have gone too far. Yeah, now see what it's doing? Sitting way tall. I can tell you right now that's way too much. As you can see, we went about, so somewhere in between what I did and what I need to undo here. Okay. All righty, after a little bit of back and forth bending it a little bit, I've got this down at 280. It just, just touches right there. So 320 is definitely not going to touch. Uh, I'm going to, I want a little more than that though. Just a little bit more. Not much. Yeah. We're right between 280 and 320 right there. We're going to let that go. Now this has a little bit of a spline to it on one end. These are designed to be just tapped in ever so gently and carefully. Let's have this supported best I can here. Boy, it really makes me nervous tapping on that and just watching that ear break right off. Let's see if we can get her tapped in there. I actually tapped in real easy. I want to go just a touch more. There we go, that's not going to interfere with the bowl of the gasket now. Okay, now that we have the float where we want it, I'm going to go ahead and put this little jet back in the side here and tighten it in. Very carefully so I don't hit my float and screw up my adjustment on my carb. There we go. Beauty. Now we can put our new gasket right down here. Oh, that gasket feels so nice. It's made of some kind of nice rubber. That's going to lay in there just beautifully. Now, what you want to be careful of, you got to have, there's two gaskets. There's a new gasket that goes right here. See, it sits right down in there and seals that face off. You got to make sure you put that one on. Easy one to miss. Easy one to miss. Then your bowl can go on. And then you can put your other gasket that's on the outside. Every little bolt here. We'll get that tightened down. With that tightened down, can rock this back and forth and hear that float kind of go boink, boink. Now it's time to put our, let's put our fuel pump together. Boy, this is one I really want, I really, really, really want to get right. We got all the gaskets here. And according, according to my diagram, this is your outside. And it shows a big hairy gasket with a whole round hole in it. And it looks like it only can go on one way. Kudos. Good job, engineers. So that sits on there like that. But before that, Looks like this big old solid piece of rubber goes on here. There again, a one-way fit. So 
So it is kind of nice to see this fit that, right? So you, to get this, I mean, to really get this right, you put that on there and make sure it lines up on all the openings. Then you can put this on. And then this piece. Does that make sense to you? And then you got this guy. And it's got pins to locate everything. So the easier way to do it would probably be look at it from this direction. Same thing. You can put it on, you know, it's, it's all lined up. You can put the one on top of the other. Boom. And that assembly appears to be very correct. So I'm going to set this down here. Then on the carburetor side here, boy, see it had how many, which way do these go? Now I'm not sure why they're showing, you've got two styles here it looks like. They're identical in every way. Then you got the thick hard one. Which I'm guessing goes up against. There again, two locating pins. And see, these you can easily see go on one way. But which one's the better one? The soft rubber or this one? Or do they both go together? Well, it does appear the old carburetor had both. It had both of them. Which way would you guys do it? I think it would be rubber and then fiber, or fiber and then rubber. Okay, good news. I have another carb right here that... We'll see if I can tell if it has or what it has. Before I'd use this one, I'd rebuild it anyway, so I'll be taking it apart and putting it back together loosely. And I'll guarantee you, guarantee you, I'll be watching my own video to put it back together right. But I'm going to see if I guessed right. I'm hoping I did. All right, the camera on my... The battery on my camera. The camera on my battery died. The battery on my camera died. So what we got here between the carburetor is the thicker gasket, the little fiber looking gasket, the plate, another thick gasket, and then the little rubber gasket. And I did find in the other carburetor a much better looking screen. So I'm going to take the best of that and put it on here. And then the gasket goes on here and the bolt. Now this came with a new needle, but it doesn't match the old needle. It does an overall length. Do I dare use the new needle? Just for fun, I'm going to take the old needle and run it in here. There's no spring on it. Just to get a, just to see where it lands, you know, depth wise down in here. Because you want it to bottom out on that taper. Looks like it comes out just about flush. Looking at how the threads go in there. It looks like it'll actually just put more tension on the spring, but we'll see. That goes down just about flush as well. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the new one in just because it's new. I don't have any other reason. What's kind of interesting is there's no seal around it. It's just a spring and this seat. Yeah, it would appear there's nothing there but just that. And I did check the other carburetor I have to see if it looked like, it actually looks like this needle and seat. So there must have been just some, you know, change between the years performing the exact same function. So we'll go ahead and bottom this out. Right there's bottom. I'm gonna go back a half, one, one and a half to start. That's usually a, a fantastic starting point. Well, we've got everything installed on here. Uh, we got our new gasket right here.
it has a hole in it. Any guesses as to which way the hole goes? Does it open up this one or open up that one? Does anybody know? I'll go by the carburetor that <laughs> had been running. Looking at it, it looks like it goes down here and opens up this bottom hole is where it goes. The top hole stays shut. We'll go with that. Let's just try that. Guess it's time to put the carburetor back on the old outboard. Now looking at the old gasket here, this gasket is still there as the hole down at the bottom as well. So we'll go with that. But I got to get this old gasket over here off, out of my way. Okay, we've got the carburetor slid back on here. That gasket, can't see it here, but it had a hole on the power head. So you'd line that gasket up, the hole in the power head, the little hole with the gasket, that'd be the way it would go. I've got this slid in place. I've got the throttle linkage setting up there, doing throttle linkage things, so that all looks pretty good so far. All right, we're getting one step closer. I'm going to go ahead and figure out how to hook the, I can't remember how this uh, throttle or uh, choke linkage, where it bolted to, but run a fuel line up and over to the quick connect. And we'll put our two bolts on and tighten the carburetor up against the face. We won't be too far from possibly making some sparking noise. Okay, we've got the carburetor mounted back in place. I figured out the position I wanted this in. So I've tightened down the screw here on the right to hold the screen and the screen housing in place. Uh, I've got the choke put in. You can see the choke works there. The throttle is all hooked up. And I also robbed this off the other carburetor because I thought, you know, you don't really need a screen or an L filter or anything on an outboard motor because you're not in dusty conditions typically. But this will keep little varmints from crawling into your engine and setting up little homes and causing problems over the winter time. Well, what we got left to do now is uh, I think I want to figure out this wiring. I got a kill switch that's not here. I've got a wire that's taped off that I'm guessing goes to the kill switch and into a ground. And I'll just confirm that. And uh, then I'll be just putting the rest of the housing on. And we'll be ready to see what this bad boy will do. I got the spark plugs not tightened up yet. We'll have to do that. But we're ready to start it. But it's getting late enough tonight. I'm going to call it a night tonight. And we'll come back in the morning. Finish putting things together. And uh, let's see if it'll run. Okay, guys. We got my computer out here. Just a quick break. This my son will appreciate because he's the best IT guy I know. And uh, he's always looking at my computer going, that is filthy. <laughs> and I uh, wonder how it still works. And let's just see how much dust comes out of here. I've got one of these little X powers I bought. I'll leave a link below in the description where I got it. Off of Amazon, I believe. But uh, it's a two speed. <laughs> And it's just designed for this type of equipment. It's got a little brush on the end, so you can actually get in here and brush some things. So let's see how much dust piles out of here. How am I, how, am I gonna lose my ability to breathe here in a minute? Oh, wow. just good but good enough all right that ought to work a lot better not that it wasn't working fine before but we could definitely use some cleaning okay we're getting really close here in this old mercury i went and did a little wiring research found a diagram very simple diagram there's nothing complex about it i'm not going to leave a link this says it's for a seven and a half horse a 9.8 merc manual start well guess what they're going to be all very similar because they didn't change the wiring to go from uh, 
little motor to a big motor, bottom line. And they use the same kind of wiring colors throughout, I believe the years for the most part, at least what I'm seeing here. So I'm gonna get down in here and show you up close what I'm talking about, what I want to do. Here's the view of my super simple diagram. And it shows a brown and a white wire coming down off the trigger. Well, guess where these go? Down up to the trigger, there's a brown and a white. Goes into a brown and white, goes into the CDI box. Switch box, whatever you want to call it. And then there's an orange wire. I was wondering why this orange wire was taped off. Well, guess why they taped it off? They must have been using the choke to kill it um, or something, which isn't great because it can sometimes be hard to start if you do that because you basically flood it out to kill it. Well, there's an orange wire that comes down here and there's a switch supposed to be right here that says stop right there. Can you see that? And then, so the orange wire goes to the stop and then goes black to ground. So when you push the button, basically it grounds out the spark. And believe you me, I was so tempted to just pull this pull cord, put some gas on it, pull some pull cord here and see if she's gonna kick and run. My fear was I don't have the blower unit on it, which, so it's not gonna ruin the impeller because it's not hooked up, just to hear this thing pop and kick and run for a second, right? Well, the bad part is if I don't have water running up through it, if I had a carburetor full of gas, and say for instance, a choke, when I pulled it, didn't kill it, and it sat there and ran and ran and ran, and all I had to run around here and pull spark plugs off and get electrocuted, I didn't wanna do that. I wanna be able to, if it starts to run, let it run for about 10 seconds and then hit the kill switch and go, I think we got ourselves a runner here but I didn't want it to sit there and run without being able to kill it fast and overheat the motor and, and wreck, wreck all the hard work I've done on it. So let's go ahead and wire up that kill switch. Once I got the kill switch wired up, I'll tighten up the spark plugs. We'll pump up the bulb for some pressure. And let's see if it kicks and fires. If it kicks and fires, we're off to the races. We're getting real close at that point. Okay, let's try that. Oh, and I got to find three fine threaded, I think they're 5 sixteenths. Certainly look like 5 sixteenths bolts or nuts to hold this cover down. I don't know where they went. They're probably somewhere near me. Within, within about no further than 18 feet from me in any direction here. <laughs> Oh, mercy. This happens when you take it apart. It takes a while to put it back together. You might be asking yourself, Michael, where are you going to get that kill switch? They're expensive. You go to buy them from uh, online for just a Mercury, and they're ridiculous in price. And you ain't wrong. I'm going to learn, learn you how to save some money here. This is a Napa part. It is part number. I'll leave a link for this below. 786105, 786105. It's a 15 amp, 12 volt DC, 180 um, brass push button starter switch. Momentary on. Momentary on. Guess what else it can do? Push the button. You got it momentary off. So that's what's cool because the momentary on. We'll turn it on, run the juice through one side and to the other side and directly to ground and kill the motor. Believe it or not, this little beauty is like $9 and some odd cents at Napa. I'll leave you a link to Napa and I'll leave you a link to possibly one just like it on Amazon if I find one. So look below for links for everything. And guys, this would be a good time to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button and ring that bell for notifications so you get notified every time I drop a video because, well, it helps. And if you use the links below to go to Amazon, it won't cost you a dime more. Do you have the same Amazon shopping experience you always have? Except I get a commission for everything you buy, no matter what it is. Even if you don't buy this or that or the other thing, if you go out there and click on this link and go buy 30 other things, You'll help the channel out because I'll get some commission and it helps fund me to keep my computer up and running, to keep my cameras going, to keep my batteries charged up and buy new batteries when they don't charge up anymore and all that fun stuff. But this guy here, the cool part about it, 
This unscrews. This has a little rubber cover. When you put it on, it'll look completely factory from the outside because it'll have a rubber cushion. And it has an adjustable nut on the inside. And believe it or not, on this old 9 point, or 9 point, 20 horse Mercury, the diameter already fits the existing hole. Now I have drilled holes in other covers to put this very switch on, to make a kill switch on it. But this one, you don't have to drill, it fits right in the hole. You can't get any better than that. So there you go. I'm gonna get busy putting this in so it has two screw terminals. I'm not gonna show you the crimping or the soldering and all that fun stuff. It's just gonna be pretty basic. And then what's cool is when you put it through, get your adjustment, you can tighten this knob up, you can jam nut it, and then the buttons just bup up, bup up, bup up. That's what it would sound when you hit it while you're trying to kill the motor. Bup up, bup up, bup up. Be back in a minute with it hooked up and I'll show you what it looks like. I wanted to give you a quick gander down in here. I had to pull this off to give me clearance to get this slid in there, which meant taking this here front piece back off. Not a big deal. Four bolts, comes right off. But uh, you see, I got it right down in there. I had to put the wire terminals pointing down and bend them over to give me clearance. But it's all wired up. All I got left to do is put a round loop on this end so I can bolt it down right here and that'll actually ground it out, which is perfect. And then I'll bolt this back up and I'm gonna go ahead and pull these screws out, take my little wire brush, clean this off, clean the terminal connectors off, put them back together so I know I got a good solid connection here, which I'm pretty sure I do because I do have spark, but why not take some precautionary measures while you can? Let me show you what it looks like from the side. Now there's the push button from the outside. If that don't look almost factory, I don't know what does. Pretty cool, huh? There you go. Let me finish buttoning this back up and find four bolts and then we'll put some gas to it. Hopefully I'll be pulling it over and see if this thing will pop. Now we're gonna check spark now that I've got all this wiring hooked up the way I want. Let's just pull it over, see if we see spark. Good strong spark, right? Hope you can see that through the camera. I'm gonna hold the button in and pull. Nothing, let go of the button. Boom. The kill switch works like I want it to. Excellent. Are you guys as nervous as I am? I ain't kidding you. I'm nervous. I like to, you know, everything I did, I want it to go right. We're pumping it up. And I put the clear fuel line on so I can see Oh, I got some drippage somewhere. Where's it coming from? Well, let's see if this will work. I just want to see if it'll pop. We're just going to move it to start. Pull the choke. That sounded pretty good. Matter of fact, that sounded real good. Let's give her another pop. That's what I'm talking about. Woo, things that make a man smile. Now for some reason I got a little gas coming out around where the fuel line goes into the fuel pump, but man, that... That sounded good, let's try it again. I'm not gonna, well, golly, I just gotta run a little bit more. Come on. That sounds a little rattly noisy because I don't have this bolted down when I put my hand on it. She got real quiet. That's all I'm running it for. Oh, 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 that just makes me so happy.
Now this thing that started off as kicks and dies, kicks and dies, kicks and dies. You can clearly see runs. And I think it's gonna run real good. I even revved it up a little bit and just, I don't wanna to put too much heat in it without having the pump, water pump going up there and cooling off that head. I am highly satisfied. We're gonna put the gearbox on it and I'll put it in my test tank next, but we gotta do some gearbox work. I'll probably, probably be a video coming up real quick on the gearbox, water pump, pressure test on that gearbox, and then we'll put it on here. And when that gearbox is on here, we're gonna see it churn some water. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you got to hear it pop and run. I hope you're as excited as I am. You can't be excited as I am, but uh, maybe you are. Maybe you're excited for me. Uh, nothing better. You know, you can't, you can't donkey kick this smile off my face right now. <laughs> I just love it when a plan comes together. And this thing just is an absolute, it just, it's good. It turned out good so far. But uh, guys and girls, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you on the next video real soon. This is Michael. And I'm out. Hot diggity dog. Papa's getting a brand new pair of shoes. I know.